Hey everyone, so guys, today's video is a little bit different. Something absolutely wild, totally out the, you know, totally off the radar. I didn't see this one coming. Um, quickly though, guys, before I continue, can you keep a secret? If you can't keep a secret, do not watch this video. This is only for people who can keep a secret. Yes? If you can't keep a secret, go now. Good, right. Good, I'm glad I'm left with you guys who I trust. So, I'm in my garden, um, and apparently there's a World War II bunker in my garden. So, let me tell you how this story began. So, it began like, um, like a, maybe two years ago or something. We had a wasp nest in the garden. Um, where my little girl's treehouse is, um, I had a raised planter. It was, it was some uh, sleepers. You know, rabbits kept coming in, eating the vegetables. So I, I, I neglected it for a while. I was going to turn it in. I was going to cover it with some of that. You know, the um, the stuff that weeds can't go through. It's like black stuff. I was going to, um, you know, put the black stuff over the top, um, make it into a decking area, a little seating area, a little umbrella. You know what I'm talking about. Anyway, I'm hammering the stuff in. Stung, stung, stung. Took three in the shoulder. Wasps things. Anyway, there's a wasp nest in the planter. So. Me being me, I thought, right, I'm not getting a professional. I can do this myself. So I went down there. I poured some petrol down there, set it, set it on fire, came back. Not, didn't make a nothing. Um, I had a little fire with some wood that I found in the garden. You know, I, I made a fire over it. Nothing. So I thought, all right, we'll see who wins this one. We'll see. It's raven versus wasps. Let's see who wins. Um, I had a huge, like, bonfire on the top of it. With It was huge, guys, all right? I, I went overkill. Uh, but you know what? Sometimes you need that to get the job done. Anyway, while I was having the fire, it was raging. I had, um, excuse me, excuse me. Anyway, there's, a, there's an old lady over the fence. She's like, can, can you put the fire out? I've got my washing out. So I was like, oh, God. So I went over. So I'm like, yeah. I said, look, you know, I've had a wasp nest. I'm just burning it out. I, I, I don't, you know, it's, it's, I can't really put it out now. I, I, I had hose pipes and stuff if it got out of hand. But the reality is, it's, it is what it is. Um, anyway. I got talking to her, she was really nice. She said, have you been in your bunker? I said, what do you mean? She said, you've got the bunker in the, um, you know, you've got the communal bunker in your garden. Where we live, it's like kind of isolated. I said, no, I haven't. Didn't really think too much of it, but I looked and I was like, yeah, well, you know, if you start ex excavating on these things, how far do you go? What do you find? And then how much more of a money pit is it? It may be nothing under there. Anyway, a couple of days ago, I'm in the garden, um, cutting back some nettles and stuff. And um, one of the guys next door is like, Sean, can you um, can, I, can I get some of them bricks? So I've, I've got an old wall that's fallen down and there's like bricks everywhere. So I said, yeah, 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 sure. He's building a retaining wall because he's got some, a potato plant. Anyway, that's not relevant. Anyway. So he says, have you been in your bunker? I said, mate, I said, you're the second person who said this. I said, what's it all about? He said, yeah, apparently you've got the bunker in your garden. I said, do you know anybody who's like actually seen it? He said, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, he mentioned this guy, his neighbour. So we went over and we spoke to him. And he came out, he said, yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to play in it when I was a kid. I said, have you physically been in it yourself? He said, yes. I said, What's, what, what happened to it? He said, they just backfilled the entrance and covered it in dirt. <sighs> so now what do you do? So Sarah's got, you know, we, I told Sarah, she's going, oh my God, we need to excavate. It's going to be a world, it's going to be a bomb shelter for the war. I said, yeah. I was like, right, okay. First of all, what we need to understand is when these bunkers were built, they're not built for radiation. They're built for, you know, you know, Messerschmitt, not Messerschmitt, Doinier's coming over and doing, you know, mass carpet bombing. The reality is where I live in the UK, it's highly, highly, highly unlikely that we're going to take a direct hit from an intercontinental ballistic missile. In fact, it's highly unlikely anywhere in the UK is, but, if it does happen, what you are likely to receive is radiation from fallout. So when the bomb hits the ground, it explodes. All that stuff that comes back down, it's, um, it's radiated. That's the stuff that, you know, kind of kind of you don't want it on you. So our basement or our cellar, depending which part of the world you're from, you know, it's really far away from where that ash can land. So basically the ash will land on our roof. 
it won't get through our roof because our roof's waterproof. So it'll it'll sit there, which is a, which is a long way from the from the cellar. Now, if we was in the bunker, and I don't know what the integrity is like of this bunker, I don't know how much concrete's there, I don't know how much earth's on top of it. So there's a lot of variables in this in this analysis, and I've not even seen it yet. But if this basically lands on the grass on top of our bunker, eventually that's going to seep through, depending on thickness and concrete and all the rest of it. You know, so where we, you know, so the reality is we're a lot safer in our cellar. Um, it's clean, it's easy to get to. If you're in bed, it's just down the stairs, down the stairs, down the stairs, and you know you're fine however if i excavate this what i'm thinking and i've not told sarah this yet guys so don't you all right i'm thinking underground swimming pool and forward slash grotto forward slash barbecue area so that's what i'm thinking guys i don't know it's going to depend on the integrity it's going to depend if it's there at all or again this may just be a big hot steaming cup of nothing you know the roof may have caved in there's all sorts of things that could have happened and when you start these projects they're kind of like money pits but you know it's summer it's nice weather why not do it it's just going to be a bit of digging this afternoon or this uh well right now and um, and see where it goes Digging is hard work, especially by hand. I've done a lot of digging. I've done a lot of digging trenches in my time. Um, I don't want to get an excavator in at the moment um, because I want to do it by hand and see if it's there first. Save a lot of time, save a lot of effort, save a lot of money. Also, if you do start getting excavators in, people kind of know where it is. So, you know, I think... I think when, when I told, you know, when I, when I was talking to Sarah and the kids, you know, I, I think everybody's, everybody's imagination was like, you know, we're going to open these blast doors and there's going to be like computers start whirling up from like World War Two. And it's going to be like something off a, off a Marvel film or like the Avengers or something. The reality is it's probably going to be grim. It's probably going to be filled with water if it's there at all. I don't know what's going to happen, but I'm going now to B&M to get some shovel or the range to get some shovels. And I'm going to be starting to dig well in a couple of hours and i'll let you guys know on the i'll keep you guys updated on the progress guys all right don't forget to like and follow this video guys all right it's going to be wild i'll let you know what we're doing see you soon